All right, we are off to Danner's work. He says he doesn't have the adapter for these big rotors, so we might have to go down to a shop down the road and see what we can do. We, 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 we may end up buying new rotors. Go, uh, go left. We got the pieces we need to cut this. Oh my goodness, these are heavy! But thank you to Bethel Park Automotive for letting us borrow this. This is the famous James Danner. You guys don't know my brother James. You need to look him up on YouTube. He's got his own channel too. James. You're walking like you just did legs. <laughs> this thing's heavy. James is the real mechanic of the family, not me. Where's he at? There's his Nova, get a shot of his Nova. <laughs> and there's Clark, get a shot of Clark. Clark. Sure does. Turn around. You got some pizza? I, I guess I ruined your intro. No way. <laughs> What's up, Taylor? What's up? Jam cameraman. <laughs> So did you go borrow that stuff? Yeah. Rich wasn't there. No. There was a there was a guy that was there that just trusted me that I knew you and <laughs> he knew your name and handed me what I needed. So nice. I mean, I could have walked out of that yeah, shop and been like, that's the way we work around here. Uh, our lighting okay? Yeah, it's it's good. It's good. Yeah. Pizza, man. Let me get pizza. Just a couple bread. It's all yours. So what did you get? I don't know. I think I did okay. Come over here, Caleb. Yeah. Did you get the hub? The other little hub? There should be two of these. Because this is the part I yeah. need. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> you need that. Do we need to go back? Damn it. Actually, there's one. Wait. What's this? This is a tire balance. Is it? That's for the balancer. <laughs> they, they have, see, they have a collar. It looks like kind of like this. Yeah. But it would be tapered. Well, come down See, with me real you're quick. You're gonna need three I don't of these. Know this guy. He he gave me this stuff and we didn't even know each come other. On. Come on. I'll, I'll drive. Just huh? come in with me real quick. All right. Yeah, keep the camera rolling. Yeah, well. Yeah, you got these snug enough. Well, I don't know. I thought this bed looked okay. It'll work. Yeah. That, so these are good. You need another. Yeah. I need two of those. One more of these. But I need the. I need the collar that. Do we want to take this back with us? Yeah. Okay. And back yeah, that Okay. Okay. You need. Should I, we bring this? Just leave that there. Okay. James Danner. You gotta look him up on YouTube. This is Joe Moydow, the famous Joe, who started me on my path. I used to work here back in the day. For you, those of you that don't know, this is the, this is the garage that hired me. Joe, Joe is the guy that hired me right out of Rosedale as this long-haired. Uh, Danner still got his like hair. Me. Yeah. <laughs> What's that say on the side of your thing? Caution, open flame. Rich wasn't there. No, I don't know. The guy that I talked to said he's around, but he's not there. And I said, well, is he working it? <laughs> yeah. He's not there. He's somewhere. He's somewhere. That was, that was the best. Did you talk to the boss? Or no, just, I just, just went right to the garage door. That was the guy I talked to right there with the long hair. Oh, okay. I don't even know his name. All right. Back up into this thing, man. Let's film. Well, that. I mentioned your name. I mean, I can bleep it out if you don't want. I know that. Bleep. He's got a real professional bleep noise too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Rich. I'll t I'll see you in a little bit. So, how many videos you got now on your channel, Danner? And then you need to roll step, so you're not bouncing the camera. Nick, Nick knows all about the roll step, huh, Nick? Drum line, Nick. 
You have the most dimly lit shop ever. It's horrible. I mean, it looks fine on film. Okay, good, but it's hey, you want to see? Horrible in person. <laughs> Come over here and watch watch what your uncle's doing. I got work to do. Okay. All this right. is this is more important. <laughs> yes. Well, see. You're just not prepared. You got like what do you rust mean? everywhere. I know. We gotta clean that surface. I know. Off. Well, see, I got this thing to clean the rims. We can just blast all the rust off. Then it'll be cloudy in here. No, that's all right. <laughs> Wait, Man. before before we cut this. We need to uh, we need to mic it real quick. Can we do that? Yeah. Just to show it. There's stampings on the back. It's a I think it's a metric uh, marking. Is it showing? Yeah. Thirty six point or is that thirty four? No. Thirty six point five millimeter. Right. Okay. Let's mic that real quick. These have never been cut. And they're about a year old, uh, Danner. So they should be good. I, I actually didn't want to cut them, but I just thought maybe we could. You know, people want to see you, man. I mean, look at that beard. Why would they not? I just got want to see this morning. You. Did you? So you were pressed. This stuff was like pointing that all the way, like <laughs> oh, nice. feathers and stuff. Okay. So inside piece, spring. Got it. Yeah, did you see it? Yep. And what I was telling the guys um, at, in, in the driveway, Dan, is one of the biggest problems you have in cutting rotors on a lathe is, is just getting it uh, parallel and, and having it so it's not wobbling, you know? Yeah, I, and, and an on-car brake lathe. What I was telling them, an on-car brake lathe is, is the best way to do it. Never but got to use them. oh, dude, they're so sweet. We have them at the school. That'd be nice for the ones where you got to destroy wheel bearings, like Colorado. Yeah, right. Now the only problem though is when you find out the hard way that you have a locking differential in your truck and you turn the machine on oh. and, and make the machine like totally freaking nice. come up on. Yeah, it was bad. Oops. Yeah, oops is right. So what I usually do, just because like you were saying, yep. chucking it, um, where did I put the... I'll leave this loose, yep. you know what I mean? Yep. And then I'll turn the machine on and let it kind of like spool up. Yep. And then I'll just kind of grab it and let it tighten Same itself. Same exact thing I, I would and do. And then, you know what I mean? Yep. Try to get as little wobble as you can. And then, you know, whenever I, I'll just put a, a little bit on. I don't put much on it because if you go too tight, I could show you. Yeah. If you grab it and you like crank on it, that didn't do it because he got such big something rotor. else that I, I would uh, do too. Um, go ahead and set that up, and I'll, I want to show the I'm gonna show our peeps here. Something else I used to do is I take. Let me see that tool. I would take this tool, and then before I would start cutting, I would set it next to the yeah, and make sure it's next not to the rotor itself, and make sure. Can you hold that right there? I want to zoom in on that. I want to make sure the gap between the rotor surface and my tool is not wobbling all over the place. Yeah, it's good. Right there. Yeah, and if it is, then you rechuck it exactly. again and check it again. Like a lot of times, if you have a, a thing like that, I'll uh, you can you know make a mark with the one. You know what I mean? Yes, I and do. And then reset it up and make sure that marks yeah, in gotcha. pretty close to the same spot if you have yep. one that's that one. And wouldn't you say? I mean, well, you're you're not dealing with students like I am, but I I mean the biggest thing that we see in cutting a rotor is that part right there. You don't chalk it, chuck, chalk. I don't know. Uh, chalk. Chuck you don't set it up on yeah. the machine right, that's where your and issues you're come. Your work yeah. Into. Yeah. Let me grab a mic. Now this isn't good for state inspection because yeah. you need the ones with the points and Yeah. And you're Did anyone of... take the inspection test yet? No, I let oh. mine expire. Did you really? Yeah, I haven't inspected a car yeah. in 16 years. I have no plans on I got 37.7. 37 37.7. 37 right. It was like all administrative the, stuff. Well, the only, like, hold on, we'll talk about that in a second. The only issue with that is the ridge. I went over it. See the how top. it has a lip, there's a dent here. I can't see it with the camera. Oh, I see it. Yes, so as long as you get that part down below the ridge, which I did. And you said this tool is not good for PA no. state inspection? Well, I mean, no. I mean, if you're just checking, but if you want to look for scoring, you need the one with a point on it. Mm -hmm. And then they want it in thousands, not metric. Like, 
Um, it's really? Terrible. Yeah, I mean, it's my cute, my quality insurance officer come in and start telling me all this stuff, and then I start reading it whenever I want. They to won't my take a metric reading on the no, state. because the they 15, want you to thousand scoring. Well, see, I don't have to write that in the book. Then, yeah. from an inspection standpoint, I better have a tool that can measure fifteen thousand scoring. You know, that's the point. So, if you don't have that, if all you have is metric, you're in trouble. From a what tools you have now? Whenever I'm measuring it, it's stamped metric and it's a yeah flush rotor and there's yeah. no scoring. As long as I'm comfortable that yeah. it's above spec, I don't write that in the book. I right? got you. But from an inspection tool standpoint, you need one that has to measure in 30 seconds or thousands. I'm sorry, yep. that's the way it's written in the book. But yeah, I took that test and it had barely anything to do with state inspection. You know, like it was all administrative, like sticker form number. Right, like I'm gonna know any of that, which yeah. is why I didn't take it. I haven't well, done any of that in 16 years. Danner, I've, yeah. seriously, I, I, for the first time, I am no longer a PA state inspection mechanic. Wow. Dude, is this thing fit on these right? It'll fit, we'll back those things up. <laughs> oh, it's like just, just. Okay, so... Well, tell us what you're doing. I, All right, well... We don't have to do step-by-step step because, obviously, this is for the do-it-yourselfer yeah. primarily, and not most do-it-yourselfers aren't going to have a brake yeah. lathe, so we can be kind of yeah. just... Well, this one here, it's, it's either yep. drum or disc. Yep. You know what I mean? So if I hit this, and then I hit feed, it's going to make this one move this way. Yep. If I go to drum, it doesn't matter what, what this switch is, the drum feed it would make the whole machine move this way. So it's just pretty much a lathe. I want to pick the one I'm using, this dial here, you know, my first cut on is a fast cut just to get all the rust and junk off of it. And then whenever I'm done, I'll usually go all the way to an extra finish. It takes a while to do, but take like two or three thousandths off mm -hmm. and get a really nice cut. So what I do is I'll, you know, I want to make sure that fit in there. And then you'll turn this one until you just hear it hit. And then you turn this one until you just hear it hit. There's going to be people that say you should never back a lathe in backwards. I don't know. And then at this That's point, I'm this, at you, this point, I hear that. I cut the I cut the ridge off now. You know what I mean? Because if I hit if I hit that, well, you guys that didn't hear that. Hold on one second. You guys that didn't hear that, what he was doing was set, finding a zero point and cutting the lip off the end of it. That's what he just did. Are Those are our anti-squealers. Yeah, they don't always work, but it reduces harmonics. These things are definitely like warp their discs in certain areas. See, I set it up way out here and yeah. it's a lot thicker. I see that. I might have to back reset it, it yep. and start over on the inside. Yeah, I'll just have to make a couple of cuts. Yep. Ah, uh, gouge yeah. away, man. No, nah, I mean if you got one that's, you know, I mean you don't, you don't want to cut it into here and then yeah. knock everything out. So I go in as deep as I'm comfortable, and then this one here, you turn the center part, and it's probably hard to see on film, but I set it to zero, set it to zero, then you loosen this, and I usually cut a bot maybe six to eight, depending on how much I want to go. Each line is two thousand. Yeah. So I'm, right now I'm cutting like six off each side. Yep. And it's just gonna pull it out, and I'm yep. gonna get back to work, and then I'll get yep. back and check. Cool, man. This is the the gap that Danner was talking about. This side you can see stopped cutting. And so what we had is a high part here, and then a low part in here, and uh, that's pretty typical. And that's why you get warping. It, it is. And the new pads keep in. If you just pad it, if they don't hit true. Yep. And then you get hot spots, and, and it, this is the result of you know overheating as well. Um, I had a frozen caliper pin, uh, piston, so. Okay, yeah. um, but what we have to do is we have to keep shaving this good part until we get down and, and cut all the way through that. So we're, we're not gonna do a, a um, 
a fine cut yet. We're going to do another rough cut and what do you think? Another six thousand so on each side, Danner? Um, do actually, you this side, I'm, I might not even do anything. I'll just do six or eight on this side. Get a shot of the other side of the road. That side almost cleared up. But sometimes I'll do like, I might do like, what depends what that rough bit looks like. Is it, is it gone? It's pretty much gone. Yeah, so that one I, I won't. I mean, this thing isn't like, you know, it's not as accurate as I yeah. like. So if I, I adjust this side and it'll still try to cut a couple thousands off the other. So, yep. you know what I mean? So yep. I'll, uh, we want to take as little off as possible, yeah. but we also don't want an uneven. Yeah, so I'm, I'll take, you know, I'll probably take another six or seven right here, off, Caleb. Of, off of this one. And then I'm just going to cut like two off of this side just to. Okay. Still didn't cut that no. out. Keep going, man. If I have to replace the rotor, I do. Now you're going to cut eight thousandths on the inside. And I'm not just going to do anything. Nothing on the outside? Yeah, we'll do, I'll do that with a finished cut. I'll cut like two or three off. Right. But like I said, when I set that one up, it will probably cut a yeah. thousandth off of this side. I'm just... I'm going ten, man. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Is this on the fastest cut? Yeah. Totally clockwise as fast as possible. Alright, cool. You see the importance of not putting new pads on this rotor payload after now seeing how how messed up it was. That's why you don't do it. And and to slap new pads on an old rotor without a clean surface is foolish. It's it's not a proper brake job. So you either A cut the rotors or B replace the rotors. That's it. Otherwise, don't put the pads on it. And that's why the rear, the rear pads, I'm not doing anything with those right now on, on my truck because there's still plenty of, of um, lining left. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to change those without doing something with the rotors, is the point. Yeah. And a heck of a groove. We're gonna, we're gonna be under. By the time we do a final cut, this is gonna be under. Just gonna take two, two thousands off each side. So the folks down here for me for a second, Caleb. All right, so I'm just gonna go, let's see which way is this. I'm just gonna go one line that way. And one line that way, and then up here, we're gonna go on a finished cut. That slows it down. And then this is tight, we're good. Hit the feed. After this pass, we'll be done with this rotor. Sweet. And I think we're, we're going to be right at the minimum thickness of this rotor. It really needs to be replaced. Purpose for that, make sure that we have a good mounting surface when we put it on the lathe. You got rust built up in there, you can get a wobble in it, and then you end up cutting it incorrectly. You put that on the glove? I just put I put it on the F on the finish. Yeah, I don't just doesn't need to be. Yeah. I think we cut that out. Yeah, and did I you just, mic it? I did. We were at 37 uh, before this last cut. We're probably going to be under it. Nah, because it was 36.5. 36.5. Yeah, so 0.5 is like, what, 20,000? I don't know. Is it? 
want to say. I don't know my math. I know 20, what is it, 25.4 millimeters in an inch. Yeah. And then from there. I want to say a millimeter is like 40,000, but I don't know why I think that. I could be wrong. I didn't zero this when I, when I used it last time. So it may not have been an accurate number. I had 0.2 of a millimeter off and then I zeroed it. How about the pens last night? Yeah, baby. Let's go pens. <laughs> I was just knocking the rust off the top of that. You know, inevitably I'm gonna get someone that says, you know, you should use crocus cloth on that rotor when you're done cutting it so you don't have pieces of metal in your brake pad. Oh, I have one of those little stone, like, things. You're supposed to, like, you could do the little cross, like yeah, the cross whatever. hat. Yeah, whatever. I'm not, I'm not concerned. It's a truck. <laughs> All right. One cut. One cut rotor. Oh, we never mic'd it. Nice, Danner. Thirty-six point eight. So you have two tenths of a millimeter. Hey, you're over. It passes inspection. It's a good um, reason why you saw when we cut this, guys, how little we have left before this rotor's rejected by a state inspection. That's uh, why that's, a lot of times we don't bother cutting them. I mean, we, don't, when, we don't. We replace them. Well, when they're like a hundred dollars a piece, then maybe you give it a shot. And honestly, the reason I, I decided to cut them here today was I, I wanted I wanted my guys to see you and and you know see the shop. So that's really what motivated me to do this more than it was replacing the rotors. Show them the lathe. Show them you. Everybody needs to check out my brother's channel. James Danner, right here on YouTube. I'll put a link, this little exclamation point is gonna show up right next to me right now. And that, if you click on that exclamation point, that's uh, what they call a card that will take you right to James Danner's channel. And then I'll put his link in the description of this video as well. And then at the end of the video, so you can find it. So we have the, the inside pieces in, the springs in there this uh, center cone, this piece, this one, and then this is kind of a, the last piece that allows you to tighten the nut and not throw everything off. That's why it's designed that way. Reverse thread on these. And again, you can stay here. Just like my brother was saying, we leave this loose. Make sure this is off. Turn the lathe on. Put this back to a rough cut. Um, turn this to a rotor. And then let this kind of center itself. And then use your hand. Tighten that up. And then before, this is what I do. Before I put the wrench on there and tighten it, I want to come over here. And I want to check my my distance, I want to see what kind of warpage is here. Okay, I'll do that. And then one more time. I'm going to loosen this again. Recenter it. I want to make sure I get this right. Try to get this as close as I can. Not sure, I like this one, Danner, but we'll see. It's pretty close. All right, and loosen these up. We don't want these arms hitting the rotor. So this is pretty close. That was pretty close to not fitting, wasn't it? Real close. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so we want to find our zero point. I'm going to move it in a little bit further because of what we saw in the last rotor. And when we... Uh, just to where this first hits. Same thing on this side. I, I think I got this thing crooked. I'm gonna re-chalk it one more time. Chuck it, chalk it. I don't like the way that that's mounted. This is why the on-car brake lathe is so much better. That's yeah, a little bit better. It does not need to be very tight. that better. Biggest problem you have on a brake lathe. That's annoying. Yeah, it is. Let's do that again. You should be you should be able to hear the difference now. Maybe not. Before we're ready to cut this, we want to take the ridge off on the outside. And the reason you'd have a ridge here, Caleb, is because of the pad doesn't ride there. And I know I didn't measure this rotor. I don't care, we'll measure it when we're done. All right, so now what we do, we wanna zero this. I'm holding the outside. This isn't turning any adjustment. This is just basically your micrometer. Zero there, zero there and feeds off loosen this we're gonna we're gonna go i'm gonna go i'm gonna go should i go 10 on each side on this one use it the first one i don't care that deep because you don't know what you're gonna hit all right you know, i'll go six, go about six all seven. right i'll go six and this is in thousands right yeah each each line is two each line's two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So I went six thousandths on each deeper than our zero point, Caleb. And then we just go back to a rough cut over here. We're on a rough. That's on drum down here. Hit speed. Except we're not ready yet. Hang on. Let's do one more thing. Let's get our anti-rattle harmonic clip. Now we're ready. And then feed. Look, Danner's balancing tires. <laughs> Same thing with this rotor. See the gap at the end? Where at? We'll just see where it didn't cut it. Look where the, the blade is. And look at the... So what that is is a low area. An unevenness in that rotor. And the same thing the other side looks like. And this side's pretty good. In comparison, see the difference? Yeah. What happens when you put in a new set of brake pads on something like this is your pad will hit on this surface and not here, and then you'll get hot spots here and brakes squeal, and it's just it's not right. This is why you have to do this. I would, I would, 
recommend never putting a new set of brake pads on a rotor that is not cut or replaced. And being that I just cut it at this level, this 6 thousandths in, um, I have no problem winding it back in. I didn't touch anything here. Wind this back in. And we'll go. This side looks good, so I'll leave that one alone. I'm gonna go another six. I'll go half a one on this side. I like to put a little bit of pressure on that. That's it, make another pass. Good. This one was even thicker. This is still at 37.4, so we're we got plenty. Another six, Caleb. Another three lines. Just take a half a line off of this side. Hopefully this one takes it out. Last cut. I'll recheck this one. Thirty-six point nine. We're good. I'm gonna take this stuff back to Bethel Park. Let's say thank you to Dan or real quick. Ah, he's working on a car. Oh, we didn't mic up the the last. Yeah, row. that's right. Thirty-seven three. Thirty-seven two. Cool. We're good. Saved ourselves about two hundred dollars. So I guess even if you, if, as a do-it-yourself, or if you take your rotors to a to a garage. I mean, you really don't know until you mic them up. You don't know how much you have to cut out of it. 
you might be paying a garage to cut your rotors only to find out when you're done that your rotors are under spec. So things to keep in mind. Uh, let's go say thank you to Danner real quick and we'll get out of here, Caleb. Danner, real quick, I want to say thank you. Don't forget to check out his channel. Thanks to my brother Danner. And thanks to Joe. Joe, thanks for letting us use your shop. Joe's the guy that uh, got me started in this field. You guys have seen Joe before, so thanks again, Joe.